How's it going YouTube? Welcome to another video about my old sled. Actually, to be more precise, welcome to a video about dressing to ride my old sled. Um, you know, I wasn't going to do a video about, uh, about layering systems and, and how to dress for, for riding a snowmobile. But, um, you know, I was thinking about it and I've learned a lot over the course of this season. So this is my first season with a snowmobile. And, you know, believe me, when you get out there and, you know, you're whipping down the road at 60, 70 kilometers an hour and it's minus 32. Um, I, I live in, in northern Ontario, so it can get quite cold. And, and this February has been pretty cold. Um, you know, what you wear on your snowmobile is actually fairly important. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about it. There's a lot of really good YouTube channels out there and they talk about all kinds of product reviews and things like that. And there's some really good content. So if you think of the Bombardier um, channel or um, Snow Tracks Television, they, they do some really good reviews of some new products. But you know, one of the differences with my channel and the, and the reason I set it up, you know, it all kind of comes down to budget. So you know, the reality is that we're not all sort of six figure incomes. We don't all want to drop $10,000 on a snowmobile. Um, so either you're new to it like me and you just didn't want to go out and blow that kind of money until you really learned whether you liked it, um, or you don't have that much money to spend on a slide, or you, you've got other things that you want to put your money into. So I kind of have the same approach um, with the gear, right? Because I don't want to go out and spend a fortune on gear either, right? I don't want to spend 200 bucks on gloves and I don't want to spend, you know, $600 on a helmet. But, you know, at the same time, you really do have to dress properly. So let's, you know, just start with the basics, just to kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, let's just start with gloves, okay? So, you know, I started off, I, I had a look at a pair of Skidoo um, gloves, and they were, I don't know, 120 bucks or something, and I thought, wow, that's a lot of money to spend on gloves. And I see that you can spend a lot more than that. So I went out, like a lot of you might, um, I went out uh, probably to Walmart, and I bought, you know, myself a nice pair of um, hot pods. I think they sell these at Walmart Canadian Tire. You know, it's like 20 bucks, so it's as good as some, but you know what? <laughs> After I spent 20, 25 bucks on these, and they started to fall apart on me, and then I went out and I bought another $20 pair of gloves, and then I went out and bought another $20 pair of gloves, and found that they were too cold or they didn't hold up as well. You know, then when you start adding that all up, you know, that's when I went out and I bought myself a, a good pair of Skidoo gloves, you know, with a leather palm, you know, they even have a little scraper here for your goggles. Um, nice and warm. You know, I'm not going to go get into how many milliliter, millimeters of thin silate they have, but you can just tell even looking at them that they're a nice, solidly made glove. They're going to hold up a lot better. Um, so, you know, again, when you're out in the extreme cold, um, you know, you're pull starting your, your sled, you're exposed to all kinds of things. You want to buy gear that's decent. but. You know, the one thing that I'll point out is this is non-current, right? So, you know, the stuff you're going to pay the big bucks for, and I'm sure that it is better. You know, Bombardier, Polaris, they all put a lot of effort into their product research. So I'm sure if you buy the newest 2015 stuff, um, you're going to get a good product. You're going to get some innovation that they came up with uh, this year. But, you know, again, this non-current stuff is every bit as good, and it's not going to set you back. I think this cost me about 60 bucks and this is a really nice warm plug, right? And then, you know, I have a, um, a micro fleece layer because again, when you're dressing for snowmobile, you want a layer. So this is a micro fleece. It's um, sort of a next to skin layer. You wear it underneath your, your jacket. You don't want to be so heavily insulated that you sweat because when you sweat, you're going to get cold, right? So nice micro fleece layer, again, non-current, um, I think I paid about 40 bucks for this. So if you look for some of the smaller snowmobile shops that carry Skidoo, but maybe they're not a licensed Skidoo dealer, um, you can find some really good deals. But then again, you know, at the Skidoo dealers, I'm sure you can get some deals too. All right, the next thing you definitely want to get yourself, I mentioned this actually in one of my tips videos. Um, you want to get yourself a good set of these bib style snowmobile pads. Um, so the ones that come up chest high and over your shoulders. Um, now the reason that you want these, um, if you haven't seen that video yet, is across your back. What I found, um, I started the season out, I was just wearing um, some snow, snow pants, right? So the ones that just came up to your waist, they were, you know, again, a fairly inexpensive set. Um, and what I found is that the jacket 
rides up, right? When you're sitting down on your sled, the jacket will ride up, and you end up with a gap across the back, and you get a lot of wind in. So that's why I wanted this set that comes up here. Okay, uh, the next layer, the outer layer, is obviously the jacket, and um, you know this is a Skidoo product that I bought. Uh, and yes, you know what? It is more expensive than the fifty or sixty dollar winter coat that, that you would buy at, at Walmart, but it's absolutely worth every cent. You you can't compare a product that's made for that use. It's made to be out on the snow wheel. It's made to be outside uh, for long periods in, in the cold. So, you know, there's just a ton of features here that are made specifically for a snowmobile. So it has a wind resistant and more importantly, a waterproof outer shell. And that's important. Once you get wet out on the trail, you're going to stay wet and you're going to be cold. Um, the, uh, the zippers are waterproof, or at least water resistant. Um, they're rubberized. They're, uh, all the poles are, are easy to get a hold of when you're wearing gloves. You know, there's a, there's a spot to clip your tether to on this. Um, you know, you look inside, there's a ton of features for snowmobilers. Um, somewhere to put your cell phone in. You know, right here there is actually a pouch designed for your Skidoo baseball hat. I'm not making that up. There's a little icon to tell you um, that that's what that's for. There is um, a powder skirt around the middle. Um, so if you're riding in deep powder, it's going to keep it from going up the jacket. It also keeps the window, which is really nice. Um, so again, you know, a little more expensive, but, but worth every cent. Now, the, again, this was a non-current model. So this wasn't a two, 200, or 2014 or a 2015 jacket. You know, it's a few years old. It's still a new jacket, but it's, you know, manufactured a few years back. Um, old stock, and, uh, you know, and I bought it off-season, so I, I think I paid under 150 bucks for this jacket. All right. So really important to have a good outer layer. All right, now uh, we'll talk about helmets a little bit. Um, so I ended up, I've, I've bought a couple of different helmets since I got the sled. The, this was the first one I got. Um, and it's a HJC helmet. It's not the, um, the cheapest model they make, um, but uh, you know, it's not the most expensive either. I think this one was about 140 bucks. Uh, it's a Dagar, um, so a CSR1. It does not have a heated shield. You can get a heated shield for this helmet. Um, so a snowmobile helmet, in case you don't know, um, a snowmobile helmet is designed to keep your breath away from the visor so it doesn't fog up. So, you know, in the case of this helmet, you've got a, a like a mask here that, um, you know, hopefully directs your breath down. Um, you know, there's a couple of things, a couple of problems with this helmet. The main thing that I found with this helmet, it's not as warm. Um, as the next one that I'm going to show you. Um, but again, it was a pretty good helmet. Uh, you know, I never had any real complaints with it. It was comfortable. Um, it keeps the wind out. It is ventilated. But you can close those. Uh, matched my sled. <laughs> That's important. you got to be color coordinated. So again, for you know a reasonably inexpensive uh, helmet, HJC makes a, a pretty nice product. Now the next helmet that I ended up getting, and you know, this I didn't get this helmet because um, I had a problem with the HJC at all. I, you know, again, it was a nice helmet. Um, I just, I got a really good deal on this. Again, it's non-current. This was one of the first modular helmets. I think this one was, um, actually the manufacturer's on it, 2004. Um, it was when this was made, and I got it new. So you still do find these kicking around. I actually saw three of them in a store the other day. Um, and the on time you'll find a helmet used, I don't know how you feel about a used helmet. I, I kind of think that's something I want to buy new. But, um, you know, you get a lot of people that sell their sleds and, you know, they just bought a helmet the season before, so it hasn't got a lot of use. But anyway, this is a modular helmet. It's not that different from the newer modular helmets. There's a modular two and three. Um, so, you know, modular, the whole front end will lift up. And then, in this case, the reason this one doesn't fog up is because it's got this little sort of fighter pilot type mask that um, you breathe in it and then that, that exhausts. Um, your breath from the sides instead of it getting onto the visor. The other really nice thing with this helmet is it's got an integrated glare shield. So that is one feature I kind of liked when I saw this and I didn't have on the HJC. So um, yeah, really, really good. And again, why not by buying a non-current helmet? Um, it saved me quite a bit of money. I mean, I didn't even pay 200 bucks for this. So, and then you know, there's also uh, you know you can pay 600 bucks for a helmet. There's um, the BV2S, I think that they make, which is the model up from this. But 
I mean, a lot of it's just taste too. I mean, this is, in terms of looks, this is the helmet I like the best anyway. So, um, but yeah, this is a lot warmer, um, doesn't fog up. That's the big difference with this helmet. I usually wear this when it's cold um, over my HJC because it's just a much warmer helmet. The other thing, now this is something that I did just buy a cheapy version of. It's just a fleece balaclava or balaclava. I've heard some people pronounce them, but um, you know, again, the helmet, particularly under the chin here, I found can get quite cold on a really, really cold day. Um, so when it's, and it's only extreme cold, like in January, I never bothered with this. Um, I was warm enough. I was actually even in the HJC, I was warm enough. Uh, but once the temperature started to dip into February, you know, I started wearing the balaclava under my helmet. Um, so yeah, this one, I've just bought a fairly cheap one, but I do plan to, to buy one of the newer Skidoo ones that comes down a little bit farther for some of the really, really cold days. Um, so yeah, that, that's something you should defi definitely invest in. They're cheap, and this is just a, a fleece balaclava, so I mean, you know, it's going to work as well as a more expensive one, I'm sure. Okay, so, you know, if you're just saying to yourself, well, that's just paying for a name. Um, well, in this case, that, that's a good idea because that, that name is about a brand and that brand is about making quality products uh, that are meant to keep you warm and dry when you're out on your snowmobile. Whether that's, you know, a Skidoo product or a Polaris or, um, you know, whoever the manufacturer is, you know, make sure that you invest some money uh, in buying some quality stuff because it really is a huge difference when you're out on the trail for a couple hours in, in minus 25, okay? So I hope you found that useful. Um, and if you did, go ahead and hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.